Hey there, this is Pastor Peppel. I'm doing my youth spots, my one for younger people who um, are stuck at home, so late teenagers, 20s, whatever, uh, people who want something um, with a little bit of heart, a little bit of uh, emotional experience, etc. So today we are back with our game What If. I know that it's back to front. I don't quite know how to make it. I need to turn my camera. That's what I need to do. But if I turn my camera, I can't see myself which makes it really difficult to know if I'm balanced in the right way. So I have to be able to see what I'm doing. But anyway, so this is What If. What If is our game today. I really enjoyed it yesterday. It made me laugh. So I'm doing it again. Um, the idea is that you get, uh, there are four different games, but I'm just using it in a basic way because I have no one to play with except you. So what you have is a question card. I have my question card here and then you have an answer card and then you have to discuss with someone else anyone want to call me i could discuss this with you the answer or how you would overcome this challenge and so the idea is that we're talking about identity anxiety um, and the things that can stress us out as young people and so today's beginning question is i'm just about to message a friend when i find my hands have been replaced by spoons. So I'm just about to message my friend when I find that my hands have been replaced by spoons. I'm sorry. What is that? My hands are replaced. Who has that? That's a really, like, that's stressful. Like, that's really stressful. How would you cope if your hands was, no, seriously, what would you do? That's mental. So I don't know who had these creative questions. I'm pretty sure that the psychologist behind this has a really deep, a meaningful reason why your hands would be spoons. You can use them as shovels. You can use them to eat. You, I mean, I wouldn't want to clean my bum with them, but okay. Maybe with all the millions of toilet rolls that have been bought recently, that shouldn't be difficult. I, I mean, I don't know what to say. And if you're just about to message someone, like, and then you can't, like, how do you use your, you'd have to use, like, voice, and then you couldn't really press the button to activate them. So you'd have to use Siri. I guess that's what it is. So maybe this is a, an exercise in thinking creatively. Maybe the exercise here is to think about if you lost the use of something, could you creatively overcome it? Because immediately I'm laughing, thinking of all the things I could do with spoons which um is very good very positive to think that way but i'm also thinking of um how i'd overcome and get to the task i want to do so recently i watched this video um about a woman who was at university she um was in a wheelchair and her university she's paying like it's in the uk she pays like nine thousand a year in school fees but she can't access the university so she's paying all this money to go to university and sometimes she's sitting in the corridor like the lectures going on because there's not a step free access and she has to do the classes there sometimes um she can't get to like a seminar or something because the lift breaks down and there's no other way into the building that's step free so she's just stuck and that's it and apparently the lift break in that university breaks down quite frequently so she's quite frequently stuck and i was listening to her express the frustration of being excluded from um, something that she actually paid to be a part of. Like you, not only you're a part of society, but like you paid to do this and quite a lot of money you'll put yourself, uh, if you don't have 9,000 per year lying around into debt to do, and then you have to pay that off. So it's quite challenging. And on top of that, you're treated as invisible. Like you don't matter and you don't, like no one cares that you can't access the information. And I just thought how challenging that would be. So this, um, task i'm just about to message my friend when i find that my hands have been replaced by spoons reminded me of her situation reminded me of how frustrating it must be when everyone expects young people to have legs and you have wheels and then how do you get around or everyone expects that because you're young you um, have fully functioning senses but you're autistic and the senses don't work in the same way or you're blind or you're deaf and then you're not seen as part of the actual you like a separate entity almost or an invisible part of the youth culture and I think I think that must be really frustrating um and I think a lot of us as young people could have empathized with that you know we felt like outsiders at one time or another but we've not lived invisible like lived in a way that you're genuinely invisible like I saw her sitting 
in the corridor, everybody's in the lecture hall, they took the video, you can see everybody sitting in the lecture hall, the lecturer is standing there talking to everyone inside, and she's sitting outside listening. Can you imagine how isolating that must be? Like, nobody's sitting with, like, you don't... The, just the little things of the camaraderie that happens, you know, the giggling, you might not hear everything. If they ask a question, you can never answer the question because you're in the corridor. No one sees you. No one cares. You know, you don't get to, to put your hand up and be like, I have a question. Can I ask this? You just have to fumble through. And I think, my goodness, like if you had spoons for hands, how awful would that be? Um, so I guess it's made me think about that um, and think about the fact that what makes you who you are and how do you overcome if you're presented with a challenge that is outside of what people consider normal in society bearing in mind there is no such thing as normal um but let's call it the average of society so like everybody has legs is the average and then there's a proportion of people that don't have functioning legs in that way and then then what? How do we treat those people who don't fit what our average looks like? And so I think that's, it's quite stressful. <laughs> I think that's one of the big things I've said, is this would be quite stressful um, and would bring up a lot of anxiety on how you're going to overcome. Um, so I think for me personally, when I look at this, I, I fall back into um, some of the things that I automatically said and what makes me go immediately positive? Well, what can a spoon you be used for? What can I do that somebody, you know, if I didn't have fingers but I had spoons, what is it I could use? I could I could eat my food, I could um, make sand castles, I could dig things, I could, the, so there's things I can do with spoons. What can't I do? So immediately my, I went to the positive and then went to the negative. Like I, was, I said, it was a bit rough if you need to go to the toilet. But like, it's not gonna work, is it? Spoons. Um, so that's a bit challenging and you know how do you put makeup on with spoons it's not going to work how do you send a text message which was the task at hand is how do you send a text message um, you would have to use Siri you'd have to probably tap your phone with your forehead to get Siri to come alive <laughs> I don't know. but I was immediately thinking of different solutions to the problems but not all of those solutions are very easy and I guess that still gave a little bit of stress because we want things to go straight forward. We want things to go straight the way that we want them to go. And oftentimes, like if I take this to the Christian and say, hey, how do we pray about these things? Oftentimes we pray for the thing to come the way that we want it. And if the answer to your prayer comes in a different fashion, we don't want anything to do with it. Or we think our prayer hasn't been answered. And then we have like beef with God because he didn't answer my prayer. When in actual fact, we're not listening because it didn't happen easy the way that we want. Um, and I guess the 21st century isn't he helping with this. We all have like mobile phone access. We can access information at the touch of our fingers. Um, and then I was sitting with somebody who said, yeah, but you've got those people who will always ask a person. And I thought, oh, but I'm that person. Like I will always ask my hub. If I'm sitting down and I reading a word or reading an essay or reading a book and I think oh I don't know what that word is I'll just I will always turn to a human near me and be like do you know what this means because I think I respond really well to human interaction um, but not everyone feels that way so that's really different um, and it, do, it does make me wonder actually about the stress that we put ourselves under and how as Christians we need to find a really balanced way to pray that through, but to talk it through, I think is really important. To actually express our frustrations, talk to somebody who can understand you, talk to somebody you trust, who you can actually have that conversation with. Um, and I think that's really important. Like I, I enjoyed today's question, even though I'm sitting by myself. Maybe you should come join me and we'll do one of these Q and A's and see if you have spoons for hands at a critical point in your life. Wouldn't that be weird? Maybe I've taken it in a direction that people don't normally take it in. Maybe that's the point. I don't know. What would you do if you had to send a text message and you suddenly discovered your hands had turned into spoons? Okay. All right, let's try it. Well, this was my kind of youth thought for today really trying to push us to deal with our anxieties and our stress, to pray it through, to seek God and to speak to someone who's from a faith background so you can have a good chat and have um, some calm in your situation. Have a blessed evening. I really hope to have some young people join me soon. Please send me questions or come join me 
via some sort of streaming service. Be blessed. Bye-bye.